The 2023 CrossFit Open is over, and I thought I would share the strategy that I had going into each one of the workouts. I want to go through those quickly and then share with you four reasons why I think it's really important to have a strategy and a plan going into every workout or competitive event. Here we go. CrossFit Open 23.1. Getting ready to happen. When I actually did the workout, I was able to hold that pace on the road just as I wanted. And on toes to bar, executed 16, 14, 10, 10. Those were easy small sets for me. On wall balls, simple, four sets of 10 with quick breaks. The whole point of that was just to keep my heart rate under control. Then I got to the power cleans, singles, which felt like it took absolutely forever. And then on the muscle ups, I made a mistake. I felt so good when I started the muscle ups that I jumped into a set of six to kick it off. On the second set, I tried to go with a set of five and I was only able to get four. Then it was sets of three and two to get me across the finish line on the rings. I didn't have a plan once I got to the last row except pull like crazy. I think everyone had that plan if they got to the rower. And right after the workout, I knew I had made the mistake on the rings. By the time like you get to ring muscle ups and then you pop off a set of like six and make a mistake. Before we jump into the next workout, have you found yourself feeling a little bit sluggish in any of your workouts lately? Or do you struggle to maintain energy and endurance? I have a secret pre-workout hack that not a ton of people are talking about. And it's actually pretty simple. The secret ingredient for me is Element. Drinking an entire shaker full of Element about an hour before my training session has improved my overall performance significantly over the past few months. And I wanna thank Element for being an ongoing sponsor for the channel and thank you guys for clicking this link right here when you order Element, as that helps support this channel. So why isn't anyone talking about this pre-workout hack, I have no idea, but I'm here to share it with you. I've got raspberry here, not only tastes better than salt water, but it also has the right portions of sodium, magnesium, and potassium to top off your electrolytes prior to your workout. Right now, Element is offering my listeners a free sample pack with any order. That's eight single serving package free with any Element order. It's a great way to try all eight flavors or share Element with a salty friend. Get yours at drinkelement.com forward slash Jason Grubb. This deal is only available through this link. You must go to D-R-I-N nklmnt.com forward slash Jason Grubb. Now it's time to edit this video and then do an hour long zone two training session. I got to go CrossFit and felt like it was gonna be a good night for some big thrusters. The warm up thrusters felt great. All right, CrossFit 23.2 is about to happen. I've got a game plan. I'm gonna suffer like everyone else is doing and we'll see where we end up on the other side. And then it was three, two, one, go. Just tried to find a nice steady rhythm on the shuttle runs and also do exactly the same movement over and over again on the burpees. Stepping up with my right foot to a pull up, stepping up with my left foot to a pull up. And once I got to the thrusters, I got a couple out of the way. They felt good and I felt like I could really push it. So I did 185, 225, 235, 255, and then bumped it up for a final rep at 265, which is a PR thruster for me. All of that at the end of that workout, I felt great about that. It's good, I feel really good. I can't do better than that on burpees. I'm okay, I'm not great at them. What am I gonna do? The thruster is good, felt good, one and done. All right, 23.3, getting ready. I felt good, I felt loose. And as we got into it, the wall walks felt great. I didn't feel a lot of fatigue in my shoulders. They were smooth, unbroken double unders. I stuck to the 654 on the snatches. Again, steady wall walks, fast and unbroken double unders, singles on the power snatches at 135. I did break up my fourth set of five handstand pushups into three and two, then onto double unders, which were unbroken, and power snatches, which all were successful with no fails. I ended up doing sets of three on those last handstand pushups, unbroken double unders, and missed that last last snatch attempt. It would have been amazing to hit that. Uh, adrenaline was there. I had a whole crowd cheering for me. Like, it doesn't get better than that. Last time I hit 225 was at semifinals last year for one. Not disappointed, but it would have been great to hit it. So the CrossFit Open workouts generally went to plan with very little deviation from the plan. And here are the four reasons I think it's really important to have a game plan going into an open event like this, or even your training workouts. First is you can visualize your way through this workout 
prior to actually doing it. Visualization is like getting to do free reps. Visualizing your way through the workouts, like how are you gonna get from the wall walks to your jump rope? How are you gonna pick it up? How are you gonna start? And then going from that to the snatches, how many steps does it take? When are you gonna chalk up? I think through every one of those steps and I practice that two or three times through the entire workout in my head because it gives me the opportunity to practice the whole workout without actually taxing my central nervous system or making me tired. I do this before every event at the CrossFit Games, quarterfinals, semifinals, the Open, and in lots of my training sessions to get good practice in on something like this. Number two, there's this thing called window pressure. My friend Justin Lasala, a fellow games athlete in my age group, shared this concept with me. It's this idea that if you were going to go bet on horses, like at a racetrack, you have this plan in mind, I'm going to put this much down on that horse. I don't really know about horse betting, but you have a plan, you go into it, and in that last moment when you're up at the window, you feel this pressure, the window pressure. You hear someone else make a bet on another horse and you go ahead and match that bet. We want to avoid that. And that's something that we can experience when we're in competition in particular. You might go into this workout with your game plan and then feel the window pressure as someone else is cycling snatches when you're planning to do singles. Or they're going super fast on shuttle sprints when you had pacing in mind that works for you. And oftentimes when you make a deviation from your plan based on what someone else is doing, you succumb to window pressure and you lose that bet. I think back to an event at the 2019 CrossFit Games. We had snatches and bar muscle ups and it was a grueling event. And I remember thinking on this event that it's definitely singles on the snatch and big sets on bar muscle ups. So that was my plan. That's what I went into it. Three, two, one, go. We run out there and I need to win this event to win the overall games. And a competitor next to me is cycling the snatches. And I remember feeling this sensation in turn like, oh no, he's cycling it. And I wasn't paying attention to anyone else. I just knew that this guy was cycling the snatches. It made me really nervous, but I held to my game plan. He got to the bar for bar muscle ups well before me. I got up there. I went through all the bar muscle ups smoothly. I got back to the barbell and his hands were on his knees. I was doing singles and he got stuck. And that's one of those situations where I stayed in my lane. I stayed with my game plan. I didn't succumb to window pressure and fall into that. Oh no, he's doing that. So I've got to do that. And then I fall apart and we both fall apart in the workout. Number three, you have a game plan for a workout, but that doesn't mean that you don't have a plan B. Like I often have a plan B in a workout. There was an event at the Legends Championship in 2021 that had a penalty if you broke up sets. So we had 50 front squats and then 40 and then 30, then 20, then 10 different movements. But if you broke up any of the movements in that set, you had to go do a sandbag clean as a penalty. So I remember my plan was to break up the front squats at 30 reps just to conserve energy and pace my way through this workout. Plan B was go unbroken if everyone else is going unbroken. And that's actually what ended up happening. No one was breaking up the reps. I think we all went unbroken. And then that made for a really interesting workout of who could just hang on and not break up any sets through the entire workout. But that was my plan B. I thought that was going to be a really painful option. And I really thought that plan A was going to be break it up and follow that sequence but I knew that I could probably do the plan B and go unbroken through everything. I just wasn't sure if I was going to need to suffer that much. Turns out everyone decided to go unbroken or there was that peer pressure for everyone to go unbroken and almost all of us did and it was awful. But that's why we have a plan B. Sometimes the plan could be something like we have 20 handstand pushups and I'm going to go sets of five. Plan B, if I don't feel it, I'm going to go sets of four. That's not a bad option. To give yourself the opportunity to have two plans based on how you feel that will help you chip your way through an event or a workout. And you can visualize both of those as well. And point number four is really a reminder to practice all of this in your training so that you really get to know this idea of visualizing having a game plan not succumbing to window pressure or staying in your lane in your training workouts and you have probably 300 opportunities a year in training to practice this so that you are really good at this when you find yourself on the competition floor the more you practice the more in tune with your body you will be so that you're not blindsided in competition you know how to create game plans you know how to visualize them you know how to stay in your lane you know how to have a plan a and plan b and you know how to listen to your body and you've done this hundreds of times and that's what it takes to be great at this sport with all that said, that was a fun open season. I can't wait for quarterfinals and semifinals. And if you enjoy this channel, please leave a comment below and go ahead and share this channel with a friend. And remember, your best years are ahead of you. Get bolder, not older.